today I will be seeing if I can remove the silver plating from these end cuts of some copper bus bars. You can see that this is a very shiny coating on the copper and it's obviously silver. What is deceptive however is that the plating is only a few hundredths or thousandths of an inch thick and in total I expect to recover less than a gram. Regardless, I'm going to try and extract it. The first step involves putting the copper bus bars in a deep container. Next, the bus bars must be completely covered with water to ensure that all surfaces react. Then to the beaker, a small amount of nitric and hydrochloric acid are added. I would also like to mention that the water bottles I used were empty before and I refilled them from the tap. The combination of both acids is important. The nitric acid will initially dissolve the silver and with the presence of hydrochloric acid it will form a silver chloride precipitate. Without hydrochloric acid the silver nitrate formed by the reaction with nitric acid would replate on the copper surfaces. So the production of silver chloride precipitate on the silver surface passivates the silver below. This allows the copper under the plating to be slowly eaten away leaving the silver to flake off. This silver, along with silver chloride precipitate, will collect on the bottom of the beaker. After the bus bars had remained in the solution for about a week, you can see that the grand majority of the silver has been removed, and the solution is a nice blue color. The blue coloring is due to the presence of copper two ions that are dissolved in the acid. You may also notice that the bars are coated in a thin white precipitate. This is due to the presence of silver chloride. It must be scraped off and washed away into the solution so that it can be collected later with the rest of the silver. I included a short time lapse of me washing all of the bus bars. You can see that this is a pretty tedious task and it took a little bit of time to complete. Nevertheless, I think it was worth it because in the end it will probably increase the yield of silver. After the washing, the precipitate was allowed to settle on the bottom of the beaker. Everything was then passed through a few layers of coffee filters, leaving the silver trapped inside. I was initially worried that I would lose a lot of the precipitate through the relatively large holes in the coffee paper. However, it ended up working just fine. After the filtration, the rest of the solution cannot be poured away though, and it must be properly treated to remove the acid and copper ions which are toxic to aquatic life. It's important to be responsible when doing chemistry and not destroy the environment. My waste treatment procedure entailed adding sodium hydroxide to the solution, which makes table salt, sodium nitrate, and insoluble copper hydroxide. I then collected the copper hydroxide to use for future projects. Back to the project though. Here you can see that there really isn't much silver in the filter paper, and the next step is to get the silver to melt and coalesce into a single bead. I added some borax flux to the filter paper and folded it up. I then placed it in a small graphite crucible and added the lid. The small lid was removed mid sintering however to allow the filter paper to be burned away completely. Here you can see when I placed the graphite crucible in my furnace. I set it on top of another crucible that was flipped upside down so that the smaller one wouldn't be knocked over by the flame. You can see that the furnace heats up very quickly and this temperature difference only took about 20 minutes. I left the crucible in the furnace for about an hour in total and then poured its contents into a preheated graphite ingot mold. Upon cooling, the flux cracked apart into small glass-like fragments.
here you can see the flux and the contents of the crucible after cooling. And you'll notice that there aren't any beads or obvious pieces of silver. Only after a bit of digging was I able to find a single granule of metal. I think that a lot of the silver was trapped in the flux as specks and didn't have the chance to coalesce. The metallic-like luster that you see on the bottom of the flux is mostly graphite, but it may also be reflective due to small bits of silver. I pulled the small bead out of the container, and you can see that it doesn't even take up a square centimeter. This is alright though, and I honestly wasn't expecting much else to begin with. You can see that it's definitely a metal though, and still shines despite being pretty dirty. After examining the hefty piece of silver, I towed it over to my scale, and you'll see that it clocks in at roughly two hundredths of a gram. This is only worth about one and a quarter cents, but this project was more of a proof of concept than anything.